we are going to see several examples of metric spaces. Please keep these examples in the back of your mind in the future modules where we will see a number of concepts defined. First example, example 1. This is the example with which you are most familiar because we spent a considerable amount of time in real analysis 1 studying this example. This is the set R, the real numbers with D of xy by definition just being modulus of x minus y. Okay. Now we have already verified all properties, all properties needed in the definition, definition of a metric metric has already been verified. In the chapter where we defined the or rather took an axiomatic approach to the real numbers, we had defined what this absolute value function is and also checked all these properties. Now example 2 is one of the most important examples and also the most pertinent one when it comes to this course on multivariable real analysis. This is the set Rn n greater than or equal to 1 with d of xy defined to be the usual distance between two points in Rn which is nothing but given by the formula under root summation i equals 1 to n xi minus yi the whole square okay where where we have written the point x as x1 to xn and the point y as y1 to yn so this set rn along with this metric is called Euclidean space. Okay, So, before that we have to check that that definition in fact gives, satisfies all the three properties of a metric space. The only thing that is difficult is the last property. So, let me just make a remark that the last property or the triangle inequality, last property that is triangle inequality triangle inequality will be checked will be checked will be checked in the future what we will do is we will study one general class of metric spaces that come from a norm or rather come from an inner product and there we will prove the famous cauchy schwarz inequality and this fact that the triangle inequality is satisfied by the definition square root summation i equals 1 to n xi minus yi the whole square will follow immediately from the cauchy schwarz inequality. So, we will do that at a later stage. So, with that being said, Rn with this metric D, with this metric, with this metric is called Euclidean space, is called Euclidean space. And this D that we have defined, the metric is usually called the usual metric. Mathematicians, as we have seen, are not very creative when it comes to terminology. It's called the usual, usual or Euclidean metric. Euclidean metric. There are other natural and useful metrics that we can define on the space Rn. We shall see that in this module on normed vector spaces which will come down the line. Okay, So, this as I said is the most important example when it comes to our course on multivariable real analysis. 
Now I had remarked that this definition d of x y defined to be under root summation i equals 1 to n x i minus y i the whole squared is the distance between x and y the usual distance. Can you figure out why this is the case? At least can you figure this out in R2 and R3? Please do that as an exercise. It's a very very useful exercise and it will ground this theory in something concrete. Now let's move on with more examples. The next example is really trivial but it's very useful when you have some conjecture in mind and you want to get a quick counter example for this conjecture. So this is called the trivial, the trivial metric space. Okay. This metric space is defined as follows. Let X be any set. Let X be any set and define define d of x y d of x y to be 0 if x is equal to y and 1 if x is not equal to y. Okay. So, this uh, this metric is known metric is known known as the discrete metric as the discrete metric and this metric space x with this discrete metric is often called the trivial trivial or discrete metric space or discrete metric space. This is a very 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 trivial scenario but it is very useful if you want to get a quick counter example to some naive conjecture that you make. Now let us move on away from this trivial example to the most important example in most of analysis which is going to be a collection of functions. So next example, example 4. Let x be any set again. We are going to define a collection of functions defined on x. So we say we say a function f from x to the real numbers is bounded is bounded if supremum supremum modulus of f of x as x runs through this set x is less than infinity. Okay. Then, then we consider this collection b of x comma r. What is this collection? This is the collection of all bounded functions, bounded functions f from x to the real numbers. So take any set x and consider the collection of all bounded functions defined on this x. We define, we define norm f. This is red norm. The norm of f to be nothing but supremum of mod fx as x runs through x. Okay? This supremum will obviously exist because we are taking only bounded functions. And given, given f comma g in this collection b x r, we define, we define, we define d f comma g by definition to be nothing but norm f minus g. Okay? Now obviously because f and g are bounded functions f minus g is also going to be a bounded function and this norm of f minus g makes sense. Now check 
check that this example satisfies all the properties needed to make this into a metric space. It's rather easy to check. The only non-difficult thing is the triangle inequality, which itself is not actually difficult. It's quite straightforward. So we will spend a considerable amount of time analyzing this particular metric space. It's going to take up most part of an entire week of our lectures. So nomenclature, this norm, this norm is called so the, I should mention what a norm is. We shall study normed vector spaces, which are vector spaces with an additional structure given by a norm. Okay. So this particular norm that we have is called the supnorm. Is called the supnorm. And this metric is called the supnorm metric. Is called the supnorm metric. Again, mathematicians are not very creative when it comes to terminology. This is straightforward terminology just coming from the fact that there is a supremum involved in the definition of the norm and that particular norm is involved in the definition of the metric. So as I said what is a norm and why these norms are important will come at a later stage not so far away just maybe a couple of modules down the line you will see normed vector spaces and inner product spaces in quite detail. They are the most important examples of metric spaces and this concrete example BXR is by far the most important. So we have a small collection of examples at our disposal more general examples will follow. With these examples at hand, let's move on and define all the basic concepts that you have already seen in the chapter on taste of topology and generalize those concepts to the setting of a metric space. This is a course on real analysis and you have just watched the module on examples of metric spaces.